going on guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be talking about docking your ay and thor to play it on the big screen before we get started i want to thank you guys for all the support we got over 400 subs so thank you guys for so much of the comments and likes i uh, really appreciate it thank you for helping your girl out but we're gonna hop straight into the video we have two docks here both from amazon here we have this acasis stock which is pretty simple straightforward and then we have more of a traditional dock with the JSO dock I believe it's pronounced um, this one's gonna come in at around 10 bucks and this one's gonna be uh, 30 full price but you can get it right now for around 22 while it's on sale now let's start off with the cheaper dock here all right so on this dock we have a USB-C port for data transfer we also have one of our USB ports here which is a 3.0 port so you can use for also data transfer to like an external USB drive or you can plug in a controller on the other side we have the other two USB ports and then here we have the HDMI out which on this one it says it does 4k 60 Hertz and then you have the power delivery which says it's 100 watts out on the website there and then of course this is the port that's gonna go into your a and Thor and this one also comes in different colors so you can pick a color to match your setup I did some testing through this dock and the Thor went up 30% in about an hour. And just for some comparison, this one, it only went up around 20% um, in an hour. And if you just plug it straight into the wall, it goes up around 50% in one hour. So it's going to be slower with both of these options, but uh, this one is a little bit faster. Now let's do a quick one through of this dock. So obviously this is more of a traditional dock. You can go ahead and set your system up. Um, you can either have it set there for display or you would actually have to turn it upside down like this so that way we can see the USB port. But it kind of works out because you have your volume and your power um, and you can access everything here. And then just turning it around here, you can see that the fan is partially covered, but it should be able to get enough airflow once you have that it docked. Um, we obviously have the padding here so that way it doesn't scrape up your device. You have an ethernet port which I actually can't confirm if it works or not. This dock was for the Steam Deck originally so I'm not sure if that's going to work here on Android. But here on the back as you can see we have our ports here. We have our power delivery. This one also says it does 100 watts out. We have our HDMI which this one's a little bit better. It actually does 120 hertz at that 4K resolution. And then here we have the two USB-A ports and they're not going to be the 3.0. That shouldn't really matter for using a controller, but if you wanted to do uh, something like transferring data, um, it could be a little bit slower than the other dock here. And I want you guys to see kind of the size difference between the docks. Um, this is a much more travel friendly dock than something like the Nintendo Switch dock, for example. Right, so first we're testing the Acasis dock. We're here with Mario Kart 8 um, using Eden. It's working pretty well here. And just to show you guys a little bit of any delay I'm dealing with. Uh, first, I'm going to test it with a Bluetooth controller and then we'll actually try and plug in the controller straight into the dock. But as you can see, right, left, right, left. So it's not insane delay. Let me hop into a game and see how it kind of feels. All right, so we're in a game. Uh, don't judge how I'm playing. I am playing with one hand here, but uh, yeah, it's it's going pretty well. Um, I'm not really noticing too much delay and we have the settings on the Thor set to the 60 hertz mode. and yeah, everything seems to be going just fine here. All right, so now I have plugged in a controller straight into the dock, as you can see. And what I noticed that's kind of interesting is it, even though this is an Xbox controller, uh, it automatically swaps it to the Xbox layout. So when I click A, it goes on to the next screen when normally the A position would be here for a switch. And just so you guys can kind of see the delay here, left, right, left right all right y'all i've been racing for a little bit and i'm not gonna lie this feels way snappier so if you guys can plug in a controller directly to this thing that is the move because there's almost no delay here all right so we're here in the file manager i wanted to show you guys the uh, usb drive working here so after you go into your file manager you just click on the little three lines here and then you scroll down and you can see it right there it's disk so it'll show you whatever drive that you have plugged in okay, so we switched over to the JSO dock and before we get started with any testing I wanted to show you guys how you can switch uh, the output resolution and uh, frame rate so you go into your settings scroll all the way down to Thor settings click on that one and then here a uh, video output mode you can switch it from here so we're gonna switch to that 120 uh, FPS and we have to switch it down to 2k but that should be fine anyways we go to there so let's test it in some games some latency testing with the JSO dock and the USB controller plugged in left right left right left right 
Alright, so we're back in Mario Kart. I'm testing with the Bluetooth controller right now. And honestly, it feels pretty similar th to the last one. So no big difference between the two. And that's kind of surprising considering it, they're around like $20 apart. So for some final thoughts between these two docks, I think that the Acasis dock is better for those who care less about the aesthetics of it. Uh, there are more USBs as well as the USBs R3.0 for faster data transfer, um, as well as extra controllers or anything like that. Um, obviously there's faster charging. so. Uh, that can be very helpful if you're gonna have this thing plugged in so, uh, overnight or something like that to charge your console um, and obviously a better price at for the full price of the JSO dock um, it's gonna be $20 cheaper right now it's about 10 but still overall more of a budget option the only thing that the JSO dock does better is of course the aesthetics it's gonna look much better as well as it has that 120 Hertz out and an Ethernet report, which I can't confirm if it works or not, but that could be an option if you play online games or you wanna download bigger files quicker. So before we get out of here, I wanna talk about a couple of docking tips that I have for you guys. So the first thing, make sure, especially if you're on t a TV, put your TV into game mode. This is gonna be huge and reduce so much latency. Um, you can also obviously plug your controller in, which is gonna reduce even more latency and it's gonna feel pretty snappy once you do those things. Next, there's a key mapper app uh, on the Android store and this is gonna allow you to map uh, different functions on your controller. So one of the things that I've been doing is I have uh, a couple of hot keys set up for the back button as well as the home button. This is gonna allow me no matter what game or app that I'm in, I can exit out and go to the home screen without having to get up and go to the console. Next, you should probably be using a front end. This is gonna allow you to just navigate between your apps much easier and it's more controller oriented. Um, if you guys wanna get started with a front end, I have a guide on console launcher um, from the beginning all the way to the end and some customization options in there as well. So I would recommend checking out that video uh, in the description below. And then lastly, there's a virtual mouse uh, hotkey in the settings of Android. This literally makes like a little mouse appear on your screen. This is huge for games where either the controller doesn't work in menus. So using that virtual mouse hotkey can definitely save you in those moments. If you want to do 3DS emulation and connect it to the big screen, Azahar counts your video output as your secondary screen, meaning that your bottom screen is actually going to be the one that's going to be on your TV or monitor. Obviously, you can go into the settings and you can fix this by just switching secondary display to be your primary screen. But this can obviously get annoying if you play in handheld as well. You'll have to switch that every time that you plug it in and plug it out of your TV. Alright, so that's going to be about it for this video. Stay tuned for more AYN Thor content and other gaming videos. Like and subscribe. It's easy. And we'll see you guys next time.